Eve and Georgia here from the BB editorial team, just with our weekly live. So this week we wanted to talk to you about the new issue, July issue of Professional Beauty, which we've had in the office last week, so it should be with people pretty soon now. Um, and we're just going to talk to you about some, kind of some of the key issues that we've covered in this issue and the big stories of the month really. So one of the lead features was written by Georgia, so she can Hi. Um, yeah, so we did a feature in the July issue on um, skin needling treatment, and I looked specifically at mesotherapy and microneedling, um, and kind of compared a lot of the different elements of both of them. So, sit here. Um, and this was an interesting one to do, because in the process of doing it, we uncovered, well, Eve actually uncovered. Do you want to uncover? Um, anyway, but an, an issue has arisen. <laughs> an issue has, um, yeah, probably not covered. Anyway, we found out something interesting <laughs> in the process, um, which is all about anaesthetic in um, whether or not therapists can use anaesthetic when they're doing treatments and um, needling treatments. Um, so we are going to cover it in more depth in the August issue. Um, so I won't get into it now, but it is kind of emerging. As some microneedling treatments require topical anaesthetic first whereas some you don't really need it so it's yeah. in, dependent on the needle depth and lots of other things so I think um, the issue really is around whether therapists should be applying topical anaesthetic or how they should how they're um, obtaining it in the first place and whether there's just a bit, been a few changes in guidance really so there's not necessarily a change in the law or anything like that but there's some changes in guidance from local councils um, and from some of the suppliers yeah. So just to be aware of it, we have a look online at professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash anaesthetic um, at, for a bit more info and to give us your opinion because yeah. we're going to cover it again in August. Yeah, let us know if you've had any experiences with it. Um, but yeah, that's just one of the kind of ways you can needle. Um, so there's a lot you can about these therapy as well. Um, so yeah, that's needling. Yeah, um, another big feature in this issue is um, it's about cybercrime, which is a really big topic at the moment. So. We're focusing on it from a software point of view and also an insurance point of view. Um, and it's really, it's interesting because uh, stats are showing that more than half of UK businesses are subject to some sort of cyber crime, um, to cyber attack really, on your data. So it's, I mean, with GDPR coming in, it's just more important than ever to protect your data, as we know, protect your client's data. So, yeah, we're looking at what the software companies can do for you on that score. Um, and also what the insurance providers can do and where the dangers are coming from and just how to protect yourself really. So quite an important one, I think. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Good. Um, and then something else that is um, nice. <laughs> nice and interesting. <laughs> and this is very beautiful. And looks very beautiful. I can't remember, this is either the second or the, I think this is the second trend watch we've done um, since we've kind of added some new regular content into the mag. Um, so I had a look at emotional healing retreats um, in this issue, yeah. popping up in spas um, around the country. I went to one um, with I went to one at Ockenden Manor in Sussex, um, that was led by a woman from Katie Light who does some really amazing work. Um, and we kind of had like some other swell because there seems to be there seems to be a lot of them popping up. And there seems to be quite a big trend um, in spa runs at the moment, and I think no one would be surprised to hear that more and more clients need to somewhere to go um, and kind of work on themselves and chill out and there's yeah. all sort of like mental burnout issues and all of that stuff so I think it's definitely a direct result of, of all of that. Um, and it's interesting actually, we, yesterday we held a focus group with some spa directors and a lot of them said that that was a growing trend that they were seeing as well, of people just really wanting to use spas as a way to reconnect with nature as well as yeah. to relax it's to kind of get back into nature and to obviously the digital detox idea as well of leaving your phone behind and spending some time outdoors so definitely this feeds into that as well yeah and actually all of these and um, that i featured in here are set in really beautiful grounds and kind of different sorts of settings um in the english countryside and um, yeah i think that's definitely a massive, a massive yeah element. a real trend i think we're seeing at the moment yeah um, another 
completely separate topic. We have a really beautifully written piece here by Chris, who's behind the camera, so, <laughs> on um, Facebook ads. So this is really interesting. It's a really kind of useful, to the point, pieces of advice on if you've never really done Facebook ads before, how to make them work for you. So there's key tips, there's what types of campaign you need, how to work out what your audience should be, how much you should be spending, really just a, a complete guide from A to C of how to do one. So, I mean, I learned a lot from reading that. <laughs> Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else particularly interesting to tell you about. A couple of, of guest pieces. Yeah, we do. Oh yeah, we have a guest piece from um, Melissa Evans in here. I can find it. About uh, diversity in the spa marketing, mm. which is interesting. We've done a quite a lot of coverage bits and pieces about this online, um, you've probably seen. But she has done um, a kind of first person piece for us in this issue, which I can't find. Um, but it's here it is. See it. There we go. Um, yeah, about digital marketing material body shame clients. So just being conscious of the images that you're putting out there um, and the kind of bodies and people that you're featuring um, and how you think about whether you might be excluding some clients from feeling they can come in and um, it be a kind of inclusive and accepting space. Mm. So that's quite interesting. That's also another one of our new regulars that we're doing in the issue in the magazine, which is hot topics. So if you've got any ideas for issues in the industry or something maybe a bit controversial or something that's a real growing trend, let us know. Get in touch if you'd like to write something or suggest something for us to cover. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, that's always a good. Um, we want to be more controversial. Get, yeah. get conversation going. And um, yeah, and then we've also got some other guest pieces on um, spa design. So design mistakes to avoid in your spa um, and also on nail art so how to price nail art well um, and how to make sure you're charging what you're worth so which is something that I've heard a lot of nail techs talk yeah. about especially yeah. as they're getting started in the industry or kind of going out on their own to specialise in nail art is how to sort out your pricing yeah so there's some That's good advice in that one as well tons of other stuff too but you know we could go on all day it's such a good issue <laughs> but we should probably wind it up there. yeah <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, if you want to find out more, look online at professionalbeauty.co.uk. You can see our membership options and you can see how to subscribe there. Otherwise, we shall see you in a week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.